Hello and welcome to Rick's RC Flying Channel. In this particular video, we're going to look at the push rod and the pull pull cable system that's been set up on the Sweet and Low. Now, on that project, we used a standard pull pull cable system, although the push rods are basically self fabricated. Now, when it comes to push rods, there's many different varieties depending on the application. A very popular one and uh, quite easy to set up are these golden rods from Sullivan, which is basically a plastic tube that travels within a tube. So that's what that looks like. They come with special fittings uh, that screw into here and you have a threaded end where you can put a clevis on or whatever you like and you treat both ends the same. They're relatively simple to install. Uh, the nice thing too is you can bend them up to you know a certain point. They are, they're flexible and yet even with a the curve, they still work. So very popular and we'll get into more detail of this type of setup on another build. Uh, that's plastic within plastic, but this one here is with a steel rod. So you've got a, a plastic uh, tube, but a steel rod that travels in it. So if you need a more sturdier, more solid connection, um, it has its application. They come in different lengths and uh, as I said, different sizes. But we'll save that for another build uh, video project. So let's take a look at the setup on the Sweet and Low. We're going to take a look at the uh, push rod connection and the pull pull cable system. So we already have one of the push rods installed for the elevator here. Very smooth, quiet action. This elevator by the horn was uh, cut. I didn't need all the excess one, so it's going to be shaped and smooth later on. And uh, the pull-pull system uh, has basically been installed and routed through the fuselage, which basically this fuselage has a very unobstructed direct path. There's the pull-pull system. So the other side of the elevator will get its own push rod because there are two servos that control the uh, push rods. And uh, these here are basically arrow blanks used in archery and the ends have been cut off to the appropriate length and the uh, piano wire connections with the threaded ends have been installed. There's actually a 90 degree bend in this wire which exits the side uh, so you can't really pull it out. It's also filled with epoxy so it's a you know, very secure connection. These are made out of carbon fiber. They're hollow very strong, very light, and uh, they work really well uh, as push rods. So once the push rods are installed to the servo tray and the servo is functioning, I'll uh, show you all of that. Uh, as for the servo tray, here it is here. It basically has two hardwood cross braces. I happen to set it up so the servo tray can actually be removed. Uh, blind nuts installed with socket head bolts. So once the braces are installed, they're also going to get uh, gazette bracing. And uh, if for whatever reason I need to remove the tray for greater access in the fuselage or to change servos, whatever, uh, it's very easily done. The uh, other reason I do that is it gives me the opportunity, uh, once all the push rods and cable systems are installed, I look for the most direct level path to the servos. So this allows me to adjust this, the servo tray position for that optimum path. And that's when I then glue it in. Now, kit plans will always show you where the servo tray should go. By all means, you can go ahead and glue that into place. Uh, I like the opportunity, as I said, being able to remove the servo tray and to find the optimum sweet spot for the most direct path to the servos. And um, the other thing I'd like to mention is uh, the exit points for the push rods or cable system. I happen to be using these plastic pieces of tubing. They actually came off a Dubro uh, Nirod push rod system. Uh, it's important that you have some kind of low friction exit point. So I basically cut those tubes 
you know, to a generous size, whatever size you need inside. I mean, that's basically what it looks like inside the fuselage. And uh, make sure you, you know, give yourself a good inch outside here. Once it's all glued into place with epoxy, then you cut them flush, sand it smooth. So you have a, a really good low friction exit point, long lasting, and it looks real good when it's finished. Um, I, I like to avoid just, you know, going through the balsa wood. Um, you know, eventually wears away the wood and uh, could create problems down the road. So once that's all connected and everything is uh, functioning smoothly, then the bottom of the fuselage will get uh, covered up. And by the way, I do have uh, short little video sections showing how these are fabricated and also another little uh, video on how these cable systems are connected and crimped together. And um, so again, once this is closed up, the fuselage will receive a final shaping and sanding. I'll uh, be also coating it with fiberglass resin. And from there, it'll move on uh, to the finishing stages. So if you have any questions or comments, I always appreciate it. If you like the video, please select like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.